Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... That your God and mine, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would not have you or us bound to our sin. Not to your sin, nor to those that have been done against you. By forgiving you, Jesus releases you from sin, both from its guilt and from its power. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Pastor Craig Niemeyer, blessed to serve the saints at Zion Lutheran Church in Worms, Nebraska. We make our beginning this morning doing so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We make confession of our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and does cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us of all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord this morning for the seventh Sunday after the Epiph Epiphany, uh, we begin with a reading from Genesis chapter 45. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me here to you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and yet there are five years in which there will neither be plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all of his house and ruler over all of the land of Egypt. Hurry, go up to my father and say to him, 
Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come into poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry, bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all of his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. This reading also serves, by the way, as our sermon text for today. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, so you do to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend. Expect nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Once again, the text for my message today is that first reading from Genesis earlier proclaimed. How long? How long had it been? How long had it been since Joseph had last seen these brothers of his? Some might say, not long enough. I mean, remember the backstory? Jealous over their father's gift of that dazzling coat, they had sold him their brother off as a slave. That really their backup plan, done after having first given serious consideration to ending his life. What was that passage of time since when he had last seen them? Well, I'll just take the numbers that are presented before us today and do the simple math and say, hey, it has to be at least 14 years. And ever since that fateful day when his brothers had decided to treat him as, well, as good as dead to them, Joseph is rescued. And in a wonderful way that only God himself could work out, Joseph is brought down to Egypt where he serves in Pharaoh's house. Such a striking, impressive young man that he will soon ascend to a position of authority within Pharaoh's household. I mean, talk about great responsibility. <laughs> He'll soon be the man in charge of all of the food during those years of famine. God is preparing them through his servant Joseph. In a dream, God reveals how seven years of plenty will be followed by those seven years of lacking want. And during those years of abundance, Joseph will be well prepared. He will fill the storehouses so that when the years of famine eventually strike, Egypt will be supplied. Again, how long? Take the numbers before us and say at least 14 years. Long enough for Joseph to mature into responsible manhood. Long enough for him to gain trust and show himself as trustworthy. And long enough for him to have the time over the passage of those many years to think long and hard about the manner in which they, his own flesh and blood, had treated him. You and I, by our baptism in Christ, through Christ, in the strength of his cross, we are together blessed to be a forgiven and then also a forgiving people. Our Father in heaven, who has released us from the debt of our sin in the death of his Son, has given the prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Blessed freedom and wonderful gift that comes straight to us from Calvary by way of baptism. Great gift, but not always easy. You know it from the life that you live. Sometimes hard because of, well, maybe the number of times that we are sinned against. That kind of seems to be Peter's issue when in Matthew 18 he asks, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. <laughs> Do the math, and you can ask yourself the question, is he here being generous? I mean, what a guy. Peter here offers to forgive the repeat offender not just once, not just three times, but a good old biblical number seven. But then again, the Lord Jesus has dropped dead to not just some of our sins, not just seven of our sins or 70 of our sins, but absolutely all of them at Calvary's cross. And with that love then, with that love that forgives also his enemies, Jesus says in response to Peter, you want a number? Well, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times, a.k.a. 
the perfect number of times, the complete number of times, and that math will always correspond exactly to all of those times that the offending sinner needs from you the great gift of grace, the gift of Jesus, his forgiveness given unconditionally, no strings attached. Sometimes it is the repetition of a sin that stirs the flesh and makes us to start thinking in the quiet of our heart about getting even. Sometimes it's also the magnitude of the event that may cause that event to grow even larger in our minds than it actually was over and with the passage of time. I mean, that happens, doesn't it? Sometimes the longer the clock ticks, the hazier the picture becomes. And so the glory days are probably in our minds always better in retrospect looking back on them than they actually probably were in the living out of them. You kind of have to be careful, sure, lest that modest deer that you shot back in November almost grows into a trophy the more you tell the tale through the months of the holiday season. Your old Adam, like mine, must return to the waters of baptism every day as we confess our sins and receive our Lord's full forgiveness in faith. Because you see, if we keep nursing that grudge and we keep massaging that pain in our heart and our mind over and over and over again, that event is going to grow, and also our old Adam's sinful flesh along with it, and it may grow so big in our mind that it actually seems to us even bigger and beyond the cross of Jesus the Christ. And you know the lie there. Free grace, sweet gospel, absolutely no sin is beyond the price of Jesus' shed blood. All sins have been atoned in the sacrifice of our Savior at Golgotha. So complete is his work that the only thing that can keep you apart from him now is, well, the persistent belief that he didn't die for your sins or that you're such a great guy or gal for some reason you don't think that you need him to do so for you. Part of the miracle and the marvel of this text is how the love of Jesus is evident in Joseph as his brothers there stand before him after that long passage of time. Right? What's a man of God to do in a situation like that when it's been so long? And now he has the power, if he wants to, he can send them away in this time of famine empty-handed. Can't you hear the cheer from the bloodthirsty crowd? Also likely from those who sit in positions of power yet today. Here you go, Joseph. Here's your chance. In our world, what comes around goes around. You let those brothers of yours deal with the deadly problem of that famine all on their hungry own. But then again, Jesus, at the end of our gospel lesson for today, he says that with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And from the cross, he calls for the forgiveness of all, included we who had hated him with our sin. Yes, in this moment, from this platform, Joseph can do pretty much whatever he likes. Thanks be to God, all praise to Jesus through his saving grace. Out of the love of Jesus, Joseph does not forget the God who delivers him. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God in Christ Jesus is life and life through forgiveness. And so that they may also live. 
Joseph will then drop dead to all of those sins of those who had tried to kill him. Wonderful that your God and mine, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, would not have you or us bound to our sin, not to your sin, nor to those that have been done against you. By forgiving you, Jesus releases you from sin, both from its guilt and from its power. And when you forgive, well, well, when we forgive, we're not saying that we're not going to remember the sin or won't feel the pain anymore. Let's be honest, that's likely impossible, at least this side of heaven. But by forgiving, you see, you're not only releasing the other person from the consequences of their actions, but equally as good by forgiving, in a very real sense, you are also releasing yourself your heart and your mind from the consequence of their action. For Christ's love is greater than hate, and his saving grace always conquers the revenge I had once sought to get. Really, that's why time goes on. These days are full of and for, Christ says, they're full of and for forgiveness. In his second letter, St. Peter says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And you know, if God is so patient, and if he's allowing time to march on today so that he can both forgive us and also reach out through us and the church with his forgiveness? What might our attitude be while we watch and wait through the passage of time for his glorious return? Joseph saw the moment and chose to act. When given the chance, he says to his brothers, you heard it proclaimed already, he says, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. God was present in, in the situation and working for good as he promises God works in all things for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And you know, if he can work good out of that situation with Joseph and his brothers, and if he can work with well, the greatest good, the good of the world's salvation through the death of his son, then also stop and consider all the good that he can and will bring by forgiving you and then also blessing and helping you to share his forgiveness with others around. In the saving name of Jesus, whose forgiveness is our life. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Savior Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
really like to thank you for being with us, viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend any of the local services, I'd love to invite you to worship with us. If you're ever in the Grand Island area, if you're ever in and around Worms, please come and join us at Zion Lutheran, north of Grand Island. Uh, Sunday mornings we gather at 10.15 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like yourself and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thanks again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.